Well, I don't know how much you know about us, but uh, we started as, uh, in, in 1948, as a dry growth trout hatchery okay. in Schuylkill County. And that facility's still there, and my cousin and I run that too. And, uh, in 55, they needed more space, they were growing, and they found this farm that had spring water on it. So uh, they started building fish ponds. And, and uh, this is actually grown, there's five properties we raise fish in this, this area. So, as, as they grow, yeah, and as they sell them, you know, you, you get an empty pond, you, you spread small ones into it so they grow for the next season. And uh, I can show you some of that. Now we've been doing that, and uh, uh, right now, this time of year, there's no eggs. We take all the eggs in the fall, but there are uh, small fry. And things like that, and we can show you anything you need to see. Sure. see it all. Yeah. Like I said, we sell every kind of thing. We sell eggs, we sell the swim ups, fry, the finger wings, fully of the fish, whatever they might want. Yeah. yeah, let's walk down to the hatch house. Right. We'll walk down to the hatch house and see what's going on down there. Uh, anyway, uh, this is our hatch house facility. This is where we raised uh, uh, trout from the egg stage up to uh, about an inch and a half, and then from there they go outside. That's just uh, a function of the food in our space. Uh, we raised five species of trout. So they all come on at different times, and just you do want to have a space in there. We, we fertilize the eggs. In the field, like in the pond, okay, uh, what they call dry fertilization. Uh, they go in the it says, simple as, uh, you squeeze the eggs okay. into a pan, and uh, firm onto the eggs, mix them up, and no water. Okay. Uh, that's why they call it dry. Uh, it gives this farm a little longer chance uh, to be viable. As soon as they hit the water, they kind of go a little like mad, and they burn out. Okay. Um, that's why our, our success rate is way higher than the nature. Okay. Uh, so, we'll bring that in here, and we'll go into the incubator tray, which is our uh, a fairly small one, but it has a lot of water flow through them until the eggs hatch. But from that point, once they're, they hatch and they're up and swimming, so, well, they put in uh, troughs so we can take care of them and uh, keep them clean and fed. And then once they outgrow that space, they go to these deep troughs and they're on the floor. And just keep moving the space out. Now all of this farming has to do the fall. So what you'll see in here is the result of like, just that short amount of time, a few months. Okay, uh, and then the fish food gets very beautiful. Okay. So, so if you see an inch and a half fish here, they'll be not as much. Okay, that's the way we're going to go. I'm going to how it works. These are uh, the egg incubators. Uh, the water flows in to the back in this area here. It'll flow. I'm going to show you how. It flows underneath this, this box, uh, net box. Okay, the water will come up through the eggs evenly. We'll probably put anywhere between uh, 10 and 30,000 eggs or something like this, depending on the size of the fish. Okay. Water comes out of the top, goes around, drops into the back of the next one, so aerates it, and each tray gets the same exact flow pattern. Um, the top one's not better than the bottom. Okay. It's, it's all good. Uh, the water is about 50 degrees year round, and that's just perfect for hatching. So once they hatch out, 
we'll, we'll move them into a, uh, a small trough, okay. and we can show you that next. Okay, sounds good. Full. <laughs> There's a lot of fish. I can imagine you put a lot of them. We're putting something inside here, and I'm not sure. It's not labeled. I'm not sure just what it's doing. These called like finger length fish. What you consider the finger length fish? I would go and fry. Still fry. Yeah. They have to be over an inch. Um. I don't know where the definition is. There's so many. Right. I figure if they're the size of your fingers, they're finger lengths. Okay. I mean that that's where it came from. Right. Uh, and it just depends on what publication that you're looking at on how to, who, who's defining it. Right. Pretty cool. Two lasers, just over two inches. Uh, and because there's only, that's not very many, they're going to stay in here because that's too small of a amount for a point outside. Don't take a picture of it, fine, but don't stay in here for a little time. I'm trying to determine the truth of it. No, it's just a bunch of those for seven, five foot long. Okay. You know, it's eight, ten feet wide, and there's only two feet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right now, the purpose of the rainbows are broken down all outside. We have inside now the brown top tigers and the people. They're just labeled because it's too hard to tell what they are. Right. Okay. And we're real careful not to make too much. Right. Uh, it's not too big of a deal, but as they get bigger, it's extremely nice to sell the food. Uh, style. Okay. Uh, like the ones out of the rainbow, they feed on the top. Okay. So they get the feed first. It rounds out like the way to the pellets come down. Oh, that's the idea, so the brown is going to do it. That's the most efficient. Yeah, brown and fighters are bottom. They're not really bottom feeders, they just lurch down there. They stay deep. I know not hit the surface, don't come up. It's like, it's a bird. So, like, when we feed the pond, in the truck, and you put the blow the feed in, you'll see the different species act differently. They'll tear up the water, or you'll feed the brown top, and the water's still calm. The way for it to come down. I mean, they get excited, but right? right. it's not the same level. Right. Yeah. Uh, different personalities, different species. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's probably... It's probably max well over a million eggs. That doesn't mean they all survive. Right. Uh, that's, that's not all of them to go over here to the handle. For the uh, one time thing. Uh,
this is a pretty big hat uh, country. Uh, most of the other countries, it's uh, very small. Like all this okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. We don't need to be, we, we need to do this. Uh, we, we do what we want to do and how big we want to do. Okay. 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 Yeah, I mean, we want to be able to drive in, go uh, back and put my truck in here, load it up, take them out, uh, and things like that. We don't take these things like that, but it's all out. It's all quite old. It doesn't matter how old it is at that time. But this is the green water, actually, that's the way you use the pipe that you can buy, but it's a big deal. And that's uh, right, safe, consistent, but it's a green water. Green water, the pipe is going down, there's no pumps in there, and it goes all back in the middle. Exactly follow it by their charts, but generally for every inch size, you change to a little bit bigger, bigger piece of feed. Okay. So, there's a little bit of here. I can put some here. Show you a few of the sizes I have here because this we can feed from everything from about seven, eight inches on up. They'll eat that, but. Um, the big ones can't find the small feed, and the little ones, you can picture a guy that can only eat this little size, he get a piece of that in his mouth, he can't chew it or swallow it, right. he just carries it and then spits it out and doesn't keeps get, up. Doesn't give the, so you the got, food. You've got to match it to the size of the fish. Okay. That's cool. It's good to know. So it's, it's primarily made from fish meal, um, fish oil, you know, it's, it's uh, trout or predators. So they have to have a very high protein diet um, versus like koi and things like that. They're, they're, they work on They don't move that much around, so and, they need a lot of... And they, they're, they're vegetable eaters. So. You feed them just once a day? Uh, the little ones up to three times a day or more, especially in the hatch house. We try to hit them quite often. And uh, outside, the little ones at least twice to three times a day, the full adults once. Uh, the feed is a lot better than it used to be. When I was a kid and started out, uh, you had to feed them two to three times a day because the quality of the feed wasn't all that good in the 60s mm. and into the 70s. And then they really started putting some science into it. Before, it was just... Like a filler or something. Yeah. There was a lot of fish, <laughs> a lot of waste and mess in the ponds. Uh, and actually, the early feeds were, were so bad, you actually had to use uh, ground meat. Hmm. To help supplement the feed, it was it was terrible. Now it's a complete diet, and it does work. That's good. Man. So, uh, this is a just an old truck here that has a hopper system on it, and it just drives along and blows the feed out. Okay. The small feed, you know, we feed by hand. But, okay. Um, it takes a uh, takes about an hour and a half, two hours to feed everything. And, uh, and clean up, you know, the, the debris off the gates, things like that. It has to be done every day. Um, all things being equal, uh, we have about 72 ponds in five locations here. Here's how we're going to run it, but I just know that we get to August, there won't be any, so we're going to wait another year before we run They're fairly territorial, like if he likes to be up here, he's here, so he's just put the net across. And, and, uh, here be, by summer, all these ponds down the breakway will be little fish like this all spread out. And, you know, right now, this is a lot of room for them. Come back in about three weeks, it'll be like, oh, boy, there's a lot in there. Because they'll have grown. Okay. And, yeah, and then it's like now we gotta spread them out more. Yeah, they gotta grow. So what do they like in a year of time? Oh, oh. You could have them from this stage to this time next year, anywhere from nine to twelve inches, depending on species and how much room you have and how much you can feed. 
more room to grow faster. The more room they grow faster, the more you feed them. Uh, there's a balancing act between making the water a mess by pumping too much in, or there's not enough fish to keep things moving and clean. Uh, a lot of times uh, an individual like yourself might come and buy a hundred fish and you have them in a spring pond in your yard, you'll outgrow us because you're there like all, feeding them all the time. But it's easier to grow a hundred fish big and fast quicker than it is hundreds of thousands. So it's a balancing act, you know. To, and, and we don't want to overshoot. There's no point in me pushing them really hard to have them all be 12s and 13s next spring when everybody wants 9 to 12. So it's a... Does one particular species grow faster? Rainbows grow the fastest, uh, browns the slowest. Uh, in between all that, I, I'd say from slowest are the browns, then tigers, then brook trout, then goldens, then rainbows. So. And a lot of times, though, my goldens will outgrow because you saw I don't raise that many of them. I don't want a hatchery full of them. So anywhere between eight and 10,000 is a lot. Uh, if you threw, like I said, threw them in here, they would be in a little bunch. They're not ready for a big pond like this. And so therefore, they, they typically will outgrow everything else just because there's a few. Start to see it. They're, they want. They're learning to come over. The guy would walk along with a bucket of feet. So. <laughs> right. I'm noticing they're all coming up yeah, higher in the water. Yeah, yeah. They get about twice the size. We get, that's when the grackles come back and they'll eat them. So we do our best. Like we'll screen them over as best we can to keep the birds out. And shoot. They found a few with some freaky gold patches on them, and they started breeding it, so it covered the whole fish. Yeah, it was a long breeding program. But yeah, when this, everyone else, just, everyone called them golden rainbows, except the state of Pennsylvania, they called them palominos. Thank God that name finally went away. Right. Yeah. Guys, hope you enjoyed the tour here at uh, Senior uh, Hatchery. Uh, do you got any information on getting people out to get a hold of you? Uh, most people get a hold of us by phone, 570-726-3737. Um, you say you're working on a new website. Yeah, we're thing. changing the website, but it'll within a week or so it should just be uh, Cedar Springs Trout Hatchery. We'll put all the information up at the bottom of the screen here for you guys, and I will add it at the end. That way, if you need that, and if you do have any questions, get a hold of us on our Facebook page, Team Hanging Outdoors, and we'll answer your questions on how you can get a hold of Jim here and his business, and they'll take care of you. Thanks for hanging.